What's up, man? Man, it's it, it's it's great to have you on Dumb White TV, man. What's well, on with it? Uh, we, you know, we've been working working together on a few stuff. You know, we got what well, we do. Minute now. You know, all the way back to the the lookout video. No, you know? cool. <laughs> that was my first video. <laughs> that thing, that thing. I was playing it for somebody today. Like that's still that I'm that beat, that K. song. Like yeah, five K views. Man, uh, introduce you to everybody that might not know you, man. What's good, shit? It's your boy Lemuap. You hear me? All right. Now, that name, Lil Muwa, where, where does that come from, man? Where were you? Where, would somebody give it to you? Is it something yeah. you picked up, you know? The first person that ever called me there was my cousin, Hatman. Yeah. But then everybody else just started calling me there, so shit, I just ran with him, Muwa. Now, how did you get into music? Was it a family thing? Was it somebody in, in your neighborhood that kind of put you on? Or? Yeah, my mom and my daddy. Shit, my daddy was supposed to be a rapper. Really? No bullshit. <laughs> He tell me that every like every day. Now, would you see him rap or write or make music? I yeah. mean, what was his history on that? I mean, he used to freestyle all day long just to us, to his kids, all day up and down the street, through the north, like all day long freestyling. Shit, I used to think my pops was like, ho. I'm like, man, this nigga nice. But shit, he was just in and out of jail, shit, so he really couldn't chase his dream. Then he started having kids back to back and shit. So shit, like my mom had me when she was like 15, he was like 17. So with your with your dad constantly, you know, being incarcerated, I mean, how was how did that affect you, you know, when you were growing up? Yeah, shit, like I stopped being bad and shit, but then my mom fucked around and they broke up and met his pops. So then, shit, after that, shit, I always had his pops to look up to, so shit. I always had a father figure in my life, like a boy. So where were you Where were you raised? Shit, I was raised out here. I'm originally from Carfax, but we lived out here most of my life. In Pineville? Shit, chair. Yeah. Pineville? Okay. In the same area. And what school you went to? Shit, Pineville Elementary. Okay. No boy, I went to all of them. Then shit, like 16, I moved down third. Shit, I started going to Peabody and shit. Now, what age did you start rapping? Was it something you was doing in school, in the hallways? And yeah, stuff? I was doing that shit in elementary. My teacher used to catch me with raps in my notebook. Used to make me read them in front of the class, like embarrassing shit, no war. But like, I've been rapping. Like, that always been a nigga dream. No, was your family very supportive of it? They ain't really too much to take it serious, because, you know, they older. Like, they ain't used to this, like, new, new age shit that's going on. But, Shit, now, they fuck with it. Like, after my mixtapes and shit, like, they were like, yeah, he gonna take it serious, he gonna go with it, so that's what he wanna do. Now, what was your biggest influence when you uh, started to do music, and now, what was your biggest influence in the music industry? Shit. Get Rich and Die Trying, the movie, shit. Like, shit, or oh, I played that bitch for me here. Shit, like. I was like, all I used to watch as a kid, like, I used to tell my mom, like, 50 Cent, my daddy. No boys. <laughs> like, I mean, that's my favorite rapper. So I just looking up to him, watching him, seeing what he doing and shit. Just trying to stay consistent and shit. Okay. So you, you, uh, you liking what 50 Cent is doing in, uh, Shreveport? Shit, yeah. I mean, some big stuff, bringing movies there, bringing, you know, jobs and... Shit, yeah. You know, how open you, the doors for a lot of people right now. Yeah, how you feel about him, you know, wanting to change their slogan, you know, no more ratchet type vibe there, you know? Nah, he ain't gonna be able to do that. It's gonna forever be that ratchet. <laughs> Boy, he felt forever be that. You can't do that. Now, so, yeah. only thing he can do is embrace it. Yeah. Make it bigger than what it is now. Yeah, basically, it's, it's best to take something that might be represented in a bad way and make it and represent a good thing. No bull. You know, instead of just completely removing it. Now, um, on another topic of, uh, you know, bigger artists, with the situation with Kendrick, you know, headlining the Super Bowl in New Orleans instead of Wayne, uh, how you feel about that? All right. Shit. Even though they didn't give it to Wayne, Kendrick got to bring Wayne up because she in the city. I can see if it was in Cali, but I think the only reason Jay-Z just doing that shit because of the shit with Drake, really. Like, damn, you got beef with Drake? <laughs> like, it's all type of shit, though. But how you feel about beef in, in music and in hip-hop? I mean, 
is it is it is it necessary is it is it part of the culture i mean beef so crazy in a rap right shit when you get that high up like those type of niggas they won't even kill you they just want to crush your career they just want to make you little like make you nothing what advice could you give somebody that's wanting to get into music shit stay consistent keep going shit that's what I'm trying to do. Like, all this time, like, if I would have just kept going, like, with the videos, the mixtapes, the songs, would have been up, would have been, been took up. I know I can do it. It's just shit. I get the procrastinating, scared, camera shy. Like, sometimes I just don't want to do it sometimes. Like, but then my pops, had, my pops would tell me, like, bitch, you falling out of love with it. You got to shake back. Like, whatever going on ain't that serious. Like, Put it all in your music, and I'm telling you, your outcome gonna be big, I'm telling you. So, what is your thoughts on the music scene now? I mean, do you think it's it's still as easy as it was back then when Cash Money blew up, or it's a lot of people that are gatekeeping and preventing people to be seen? Yeah, yeah, it's easy, but it's a lot of gatekeeping too, though. Like, right. you can be, coming up and it's another artist he already got a little buzz in the city shit he can put that word in shit radio stations ain't gonna play you cameramans ain't gonna wanna fuck with you like certain shit like that like little petty shit but shit some niggas they go into it and they take it the wrong way and start a beef man some shit man you can over you can overlook that shit and just keep going Shit, be like, fuck them. You can pass all of them up. Cameraman, radio station, shit. Eventually, they gonna want to fuck with you. They gonna have to. So what projects you got coming up, man? What what's some people need to look forward to? Or what's the last tape you dropped? You know, Bro, I got so much unreleased music. I got, like, two mixtapes I'm already done with. But one of them, like, a collab with shit. I got two collab tapes with my partners. But I just did that for them because they said they wanted to start rapping. I don't even, like... I, I'm doing songs for them. I ain't doing songs just for myself, but I got uh, like a seven song EP, just me on it, but it ain't mixed. And it's like, like I made that bitch here. So it ain't right, so I ain't gonna put it out. Cause that's what I did like with the last tape. Like I just said, fuck it. Like I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it. But nah, this time I'm going all the way in. So how how important it is to get your songs mixed and mastered the correct way? Man, that shit important. Like like on my video with this, I was reading the comments. They like the engineer need to be fired. They just don't know bro did that on his phone. But we recorded it in the crib and it sounded right. But he went home and recorded his verse and he played it in the store that day and I thought it was right. I'm high tripping. Shit. And the fuck around seeing the video, that be, I'm like, oh man. Yeah, actually, um, I caught it afterwards. Whoever mixed it put one, I think Dez is verse, in the left or the right ear, not both it. ears. Yeah. I'm like, man, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah, I mean, being, getting your stuff mixed and mastered, I mean, I, I preach it all the time, you know. I mean, there's some good stuff that's done on phones and band lab and all that, that's, that's cool. You know, but when you're when you're with a uh, with a label and something, they're playing that in a car, they're playing that in a studio, they're playing it in a club, especially with a club. Like when you play your music in a club that you recorded on the phone, I guarantee you the bass is gonna be too high, the vocals are gonna be too low, it's the, it won't be heard. You know, as soon as they come on, they go, oh no, yeah. no. So, uh, man, any shout outs or anybody you wanna shout out or let people know where they can follow you? Shit, shout out the boy Overflow. Shout out BC Glow. Shit. Shout out YK Zombie. Shout out ASMD. Shout out, uh, uh, what that bitch, what that bitch rap name? OTB Baby T. Shout out Playboy. Shit. Shit. If I forgot you, bitch, you know it's love. I already get at me at onelittlemoop.stk on the uh, ground.